For those viewers watching and considering moving into a keto diet, knowing that it's a high fat diet, are there particular fats that we want to be more mindful about consuming? I mean, are there considerations that we have to make around our fat choices when we're on a keto diet? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think that's an important point because not all fats are equal. So I think to, uh, to understand which fats are good and bad, I think we need to understand what different types of fats we have. So broadly speaking, we can put fats into one of two categories, what we call the saturated fats and the unsaturated fats. So when we're talking about the saturated fats, they're the kind of fats which are found in animal food. So if you your dairy and your, your meat and your eggs, these kind of things there. And the research, the balance of research, including multiple high-level meta-analyses, which is a distillation of all the evidence together, would seem to indicate that saturated fats have no deleterious effects on your health at all. And in actual fact, there was a very large study of over 100,000 people on five different continents looking at saturated fat intake and people's chance of dying, what we call the all-cause mortality. And what it seemed to indicate was that as your saturated fat intake went up, your lifespan increased. And there was no threshold beyond which saturated fat intake was shown to be harmful in any way. So I think we can, it's safe to say that saturated fats are a safe part of the diet and you should consume them ad libitum as much as you need. Which then brings us on to the other classes of fats, which are called the unsaturated fats. Now, it's going to get a little bit more confusing, but we can put these unsaturated fats into one of two classes again, and that's the monounsaturated fats, which simply means there's just one spare bond, or the polyunsaturated fats, which means there's more than one spare bond. Now, monounsaturated fat, the fancy name for it is called oleic acid or an omega-9, but it's more commonly known as olive oil. So olive oil is very rich in monounsaturated fat. And the balance of research would suggest that olive oil doesn't have any adverse impacts on the health at all. And I think most doctors would agree that consumption of olive oil is absolutely fine. But then the, uh, the story with the polyunsaturated fats gets a little bit more tricky because we've got two main classes of polyunsaturated fats, what we call the omega-6 fats and the omega-3s. Now, the omega-6 fats are found in vegetable and seed oils, and they are actually have been shown to be pro-inflammatory. And high intake of these omega-6 fats actually has been shown to be deleterious to the health, and there's a lot of research that will point to this. Now, the omega-3 fats, on the other hand, come from fish oil, and they actually, they get metabolised very similarly to the omega-6 fats, but they're nowhere near as inflammatory. In actual fact, we could probably argue that they're anti-inflammatory. And the problem is that in the modern diet, we have an imbalance between these omega-6s, which are pro-inflammatory, and the omega-3s, which are anti-inflammatory. So what actually happens, our body produces these chemicals, they're called eicosanoids, and they communicate around our body to you know, stimulate inflammation or stimulate the immune system or stimulate a fever or various different things like that. And it uses, when we make these chemicals, these eicosanoids, we'll randomly use an omega-6 or an omega-3. And these fats are in every cell membrane. And if we have a lot more omega-6s in our cell membranes than our omega-3s, then we're going to be in an inflammatory state. So it's not enough to simply increase the amount of omega-3s in our diets by supplementing with fish oil. We also have to have a concurrent reduction in the amount of omega-6s. We have to reduce the vegetable and seed oils in our diet. And one of the big problems when we actually have a look at the research on, we argue, is fish oil beneficial to our health or not? A lot of the studies will give people omega-3 fish oil, but at the same time, they'll increase the omega-6 in the diets. They'll say, well, you need to cut out the saturated fats, which we know are not harmful, and increase your vegetable oils. So what we're doing is we're not changing the ratio at all. And it's this ratio that we need to change to improve. And that's why a lot of your viewers are probably going to be a bit confused because they see all these studies saying, oh, fish oil didn't seem to work but it's what else is going on at the same time in those studies. It's one thing to increase the omega-3, 
the anti-inflammatory fat, but if you increase the inflammatory fat at the same time, well, you, you negate that effect. But in my patients, what we do, we do a blood test where we measure the percentage of the cell membrane that is actually the omega-3 fat. And what we find, we can usually get more than a doubling of that percentage by reducing the inflammatory vegetable oils and supplementing with a reasonable dose of fish oil. Paul, thank you for taking what can be a complex topic and simplifying it down into bite-sized pieces for us to understand. It's been very helpful. Always a pleasure.